Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and I wanted to give you an update about my tank. It's been a little while since I've just sort of shown you what's going on and how coral is growing and all that stuff, so I thought it would be interesting to go through the changes and how stuff is growing. So let's dive in. On the technical side, I have added a couple new lights. Not new lights, but just old lights that I had laying around. You'll see there's two Kessel, uh, I think they're A360 wide old, old Kessels that I had just in the garage um, from an old tank. I thought that I would use them to fill in some gaps in my radions. They've been doing pretty well. I need to do some cable management. You can see the cables are kind of crazy over there right now. Um, some zip ties and longer cables will solve that. But I found that I have six radions and I had some shadow zones in between them in the front and the back around the center. And so I figured rather than just having these Kessels in the garage, I would put them in the tank and they do a good job just sort of filling in the light um, in the tank. You can see how the Kessel do light up quite a bit of the light here. Um, it's the sand. This is all the radions off and the two Kessel on. You can see they do add quite a bit of light to the tank um, where there wasn't as much light before. So easy win since I had them anyway. Better to use that stuff than just leave it in the garage. And that's it for the technical stuff. One of the things that I've added recently is this yellow gorgonian. These come from the Caribbean and they're actually not photosynthetic. And so I've been feeding them. I've been feeding this one daily uh, with polyp labs, reef roids, food. It does seem to like it. And as a side effect, all of my SPS coral get some food as well. can see all the polyps close up. When they reopen, after a few minutes, I like to give it another blast of reef polyps, uh, or, uh, polyp lab reef roids. It does seem to like it. It's been doing well in the tank so far. Um, it does have pretty good flow. It's right below a Vortec MP40, an older one. So it does get some pretty good flow, uh, but not direct flow. And it seems to like that. It, it opens up quite a bit. Uh, and it seems to open up more with higher flow than with low flow. So I'd recommend in a high flow area if you have one. My Oregon tort has been growing quite a bit. These are pretty slow growing corals, but um, I've had this open for about two years now. And you can see it's only grown a little bit off of its frag plug, but it has started to grow quite a bit faster now that it is directly downstream of all the food that my Gorgonian gets. So I think that maybe Oregon torts maybe grow a lot better if you have more small fine food coming towards it. It really gets fed pretty much every day just by the nature of where in the tank it is. And it has been doing pretty well there. It's a very nice blue color, which hopefully will come across in the video. It's hard to capture for whatever reason, this particular coral. This Acropora is also near the Gorgonian and gets fed uh, by nature of its placement in the tank. This one is in a lot of my videos. It's a really beautiful sort of electric green color and it's grown quite a bit. I've had it for maybe, maybe nine months now and it's gone from this little tiny frag up to a pretty sizable colony. It's about the size of my fist now although that doesn't come across on the video uh, very much, but you can see it's kind of branched out quite a bit from its initial frag and, and all the branches are now branching and, and it's turned into a pretty nice colony. This Acropora, which is not going to video well at all, is actually one of my favorite ones that's in the tank. It's a really neat kind of cream color, but then the polyps themselves are blue and then the growth tips are blue as well. So you get this really nice cream and then blue uh, growth pattern, which I really like. Um, hopefully it'll turn into a nice colony here. 
Uh, you can see there's another frag plug of something that got knocked off. I've been having trouble with the snails knocking frag plugs off. And if anyone has a good idea on how to really mount frag plugs, then I would be all ears. I've tried super glue, I've tried epoxy. They just kind of fall off. Uh, snails knock them off unless the coral is able to encrust, which you know takes some time. Um, so fighting that battle, as I think everybody does. This acropora is just right above that blue one, and it started off as a frag. I've had it for about two years now. Um, it started off as just a tiny little nub, and it's grown into a pretty nice colony. Uh, this one is a tabling acro, so it's not going to grow into a sort of like a, uh, you know, fingery colony like something. I like the other a green one that we were looking at is this one's going to grow into more of a plate where it'll be flat across the top like you can see and then it'll expand horizontally from there. So I thought um, you know, the placement is nice on the, the flat rocks here. Uh, it's also a really nice kind of iridescent green and teal color, which again may not show super wonderful on the uh, video, but I'll do my best. As far as fish go, I did get this pair of clownfish, which they're not going to stick together now to be in the same shot. I did a video on these guys a little bit ago, I don't know which one's going to end up being the female, but they're hanging out like a pair of, of clownfish would, um, just nicely in the corner for now, but um, they move all around the tank. A lot of clownfish will just sort of decide that they're going to stay next to your allergy scraper and then never move anywhere else, but these two really use the whole tank, although right now they're just sort of hanging out in the corner. My other fish are doing well. I have my Starkey damsel with the Achilles tang there. Let's see if we can get that in focus for you. Um, the Starkey damsel hangs out pretty much exclusively next to these rocks and uh, there it's gone. And then the Achilles tang is, you know, ruling the, the tank with an iron fin. It and my blue spotted angelfish are the main fish that sort of keep everything else in line. We'll see if the blue spotted angelfish comes out. It's uh, peeking out over there, but uh, with the pumps off, it, it knows something's up and is going to stay amongst the rocks where it feels safe. Other than that, we have our two potters angelfish, which have been doing really well. They're hard to actually get on video, but I'm planning on doing a video about potters angelfish. They're a nice, fun pigby angelfish for your tank. You can see a coral uh, frag here that got knocked off by some snails. Need to glue that one back on. And you can see a chalice in the front that hopefully will encrust across that rock. So that's pretty much the state of the reef. It's December 2018 and we'll see what the next year brings. I'm sure that we'll get more frags. We still are in the WWDC Coral Club. So far we've been happy with that. So we'll get a lot more frags that way. And then of course there's Reef of Palooza and all the Southern California fish stores that we can visit as well to get stuff. So slowly filling in. Hopefully we won't have any giant earthquake that sets us back. But we'll see. Hope it was interesting, and we'll check back in in a few months. See ya. Bye.